So if you've been hanging around the channel for a while, you know I love most SE products. And so this year, they've come out with two heavy hitters in their line. The SE CL1 Outdoor Wilderness Survival Cleaver and the Hungalus 2, Mark II, what we have here. So we're going to do a head-to-head -head today, talk about both of these knives, what they have to offer, what they would be best suited for, in my opinion. Lots of testing today, had a chance to really thump on both of these guys, and the, giving you a really comprehensive feel for what these have to offer so you can have a good expectation when you lay down your hard-earned money. We will be giving one of these away at the end of the video, so stay tuned. You don't want to miss that. So let's see what these bad boys can do. So we'll hit design here on the cleaver. Now, Expat, I believe from everything I've read, is a guy, and is an actual person that uh, has designed this cleaver. It's uh, somebody that has gone down and done a ton of survival training and just uh, uh, trekking in the Amazon jungle and does a lot of stuff with SE survival classes and that type of thing and said, hey guys, I want this basically like a cleaver type of outdoor tool and designed it with Essie and uh, Essie, you know, produced this for him and then they decided to, I guess, go to full production. That's what I understand. If I've messed up any of that info, I apologize. And I'll try to annotate it in. But from everything I've read, a couple, you know, on the forums and different things, that's what I understand is behind this. So... All right, so let's go ahead and hit some basic specs, run in a bunch of footage and tell you how I feel the performance is and where this tool is best suited in my opinion. Now, what we're looking at here is six inches overall. We're looking at a five and a half inch actual cutting edge. We're looking at a thickness of 0 0.19 and we have a blade width here from spine to edge of 3.125 inches. So massively wide right here. Just wanna show that to you stacked up against the Hungalus 2. You can see it's almost where the, the saber grind actually starts from the flat and goes down to the edge. That's how much extra you're having right there. Now, it also has this kind of sweep up here at the very end, and it does have, as I said, a large flat into a saber grind down here. We do have the Idaho laser cut out. It does come with that actual little piece, which is kind of cool. And so it's going to give a little bit extra flair. And this is a great place to hang it when you are wanting it to dry. If you're in a more moist environment or you're using it to process a lot of meat and there's lots of blood and, you know, entrails and that type of stuff on the tool. Now they call this a black stone wash. Looks like an acid wash. Absolutely love what they're doing with this type of finish on the blade. SC needs to start doing this on all of their knives. I absolutely love it. 1095 high carbon steel, USA made, Rowan heat treat, everything we know from SE, fantastic quality and great edge retention for 1095 and super tough and durable. Finally, the weight is going to be 26 ounces, and that's where we're going to transition into actual performance. So, I mean, you got like this little axe, basically, hand hatchet axe knife thing that you're, you're, you're using in its scenario. And uh, the first thing is let's talk about actual like food prep. When I did that, uh, it did a great job. Now, I'm not a, a pro with cleavers whatsoever. Uh, I'm not a butcher or anything like that. Um, I'm not even really into hunting right now. Maybe one day I'll get more into that. Just my time does not allow me to get into that, invest and, and train and do all the stuff I need to do for that. So when it comes to using this, um, you know, using it in the kitchen, preparing meat, vegetables, doing some dinners and meals, fantastic. The weight, the grind, everything really works well to process meat in the limited capacity that I have, you know, used cleavers in and that type of thing. But I was very impressed, very happy with it, even though it is, you know, 0.19 thick. Uh, it did a great job with all food prep. So if you're looking for a super heavy duty butcher style cleaver, uh, this is going to absolutely get the job done. I was totally digging it on the fruit food prep side. Now chopping, because of its weight, I mean, it has the weight of a small hatchet camp axe, you know, um, and it can absolute, absolutely power through chopping tasks. What I discovered is because of the, the short saber grind angle, um, it took a while for me to get into the initial chunking out and biting into wood. It would take me about twice as long as say like the Hungalus 2 or the Hungalus. Uh, once I took out that initial chunk, it did great and powered right through, but it's like an initial start process that takes a little bit longer with chopping 
stopping. So that was something that I noticed. So that is something when you are using this, you're gonna power through a couple swings, get some chunks out, then you'll really start to see the power come through. But that initial, I was, I was like, whoa, is there something wrong with this? Is this just like a terrible grind angle? But once I got through that initial chopping, it would work much better. So that's something to consider. The weight is absolutely there. So you could absolutely chop you know, down small trees for a campfire to cook over and that type of thing, build a shelter. It'll absolutely do that, but it's a little bit different because of how short the grind is. And I kind of noticed the same thing when it came to batoning, splitting wood. Now, absolutely, it's super thick, durable. You can pry, you can you know, crack open wood and baton. Now, it's only five and a half inches of cutting edge. So you know, you don't ha you're not able to span large logs. You're gonna be able to span probably about a three, maybe four inch log max if you're gonna split it up you know, for kindling when it's, the snow's out or it's been raining and you really need to you know, get to the, the core of the wood to get it into the fire to help it dry out and, and burn better. Same thing, I would have to pound really hard once or twice to get that initial edge in there and then I could tap it through and it would split very easily. So it's this initial extra exertion of energy in chopping, extra exertion in, in batoning for the first couple hits, first couple contacts with wood, and then it will either chop or split really well. So that is something to note and that's just with the grind angle, you can't get around that. And then finally, uh, feather stick making, carving, you know, now you're not going to be doing triggers and traps. The 3.125 um, inches just doesn't allow for that. You're not going to get great control for that. You will absolutely be able to do feather sticks. The grind angle is there. You can absolutely do it. Um, it's not my preferred tool to make feather sticks just because of how wide it is. Uh, and it, it will, at the edge grind and, and geometry will absolutely allow for it, but it's just not the ideal tool that I would pick when I am doing that around a campsite or you know out in the woods for a weekend or backpacking a multi-day like I often do up in the Rocky Mountains we go for four or five days um, I, I would rather have something with the edge much closer to the handle just for better control so in conclusion where do I really see this tool fitting in um, obviously if you are doing a lot of butchering uh, of either on a hunting trip or something like that uh, or I would say you're on a longer expedition you have lots of people and you're wanting a heavy duty heavy duty cook tool that you can also use around the campsite to get some work done so you don't have to put this tool down if you're you know pr preparing food and then the fire is getting low and you're like okay where's the axe I got to go you know prepare some more food you can literally just go over hack down a few branches make a few more feather sticks or split some more wood or do whatever you need to throw it in the fire that's where i really see this working well at a uh, at a um, a hunting lodge or a, a hunting trip you know you got your big tents and your guys are going to be hanging out for a week or two and you know doing that uh, canoeing trip you know um, that type of thing a, a horseback hunting this and and you you have multiple people that you're gonna have to prepare meals for as well as do camp work that's really where i personally see this thing shining it would not be my first tool for me personally to take on a multi multi-day excursion where I have to carry it with me everywhere I go. So here's my well-loved, well-worn, original Hungerless, still one of the best large chopping survival knives on the market. You get so much bang for your buck with the Kydex sheath, the you know 1095, lifetime warranty, all of that. So bam-o, there's the Mark II. Basically everything that you would expect in the original SE Hunglis, the two has, particularly in the handle area, uh, you know, blade profile. There's the only differences you're really going to see is that this is 10 and a half inches overall blade length. This is eight and a half inches overall blade length, and you are getting, um, what is it? One pound, six ounces on the full size, one pound, three ounces on uh, the Mark II shorter version. So that's really um, all that you're gonna see in the differences in that sense. Everything else is exactly the same, but the main thing is because of that three ounces less, two inches shorter, the balance point changes drastically on this model to be much closer to the handle, making for a much nimbler knife, which I totally, totally dig. So everything is exactly the same. Um, you're getting you know, great micarta handle scales. You're getting Rowan heat treated 1095. You're getting 0 0.19 on the thickness. You're getting a very high saber grind, almost a full flat into the tip here. Good, precise tip but very strong all the way through, great. And uh, guys, I gotta tell you that um, the, the original you know, is awesome in its balance for a machete large chopping style, and you can get some feather sticks done if you need to. I wouldn't wanna do it for hours and wanna do finer carving tasks. This thing is a machine at 
just about everything. I would say it takes about two more swings um, you know, to get through, let's say a three inch log than the full size wood, maybe four max. Uh, the chopping was minimally uh, pulled back in comparison to the full size. Other than that, everything I did with this was actually better than the full size because of the shorter blade length and balance point when we're talking about woods prep, not jungle machete work. Jungle machete work, the full size is still king and will still beat it out every time. And if we're just talking about pure uh, chopping, it's gonna win out. But when we want an actual do everything tool, the Hungalist 2 is where it's at. Guys, I totally am in love. I am super impressed. Feather stick making, triggers, traps. I was doing notching, making, um, you know, like a, um, a notch into a spike, you know, so I could hammer it in the ground, use it for either, um, you know, like a, uh, spring loaded trap if I needed to, tent peg, whatever I would want to do with that. Feather stick making, of course, it was phenomenal. Way better balance than on the original for that type of stuff. And then batoning, you still got eight inches of blade length here to be able to spa span any type of log. You shouldn't be going over trying to split, you know, like four inch logs are about my max that I ever try to, you know, hammer a, a knife through. After that, I mean, it, it, it becomes silly and then you're just doing it just to do it. And that's when you really start to put stress on the knife and really begin to damage it but for you know your your batoning task that you would be wanting uh you know being right there at like 19 ounces i mean it, it is phenomenal large handle get the work done you're still really close to the edge and it still gives that strength that maybe a finger choil would remove um, i would have liked to see this as an option with a finger choil i think that would like the se6 would have been awesome to see that then you would have even had more control but this has so much more control than uh, i have in my original design uh, on the original se hungalus so guys i'm totally in love with this thing and this is an awesome performer in my opinion if you're trying to decide between the original and the full size if you don't own either but you know that they're just like the best i mean you guys know how much i love the se hungalus now the hungalus 2 i think the hungalus 2 is going to go out way more now um i would say this is much more for the woods this is still for the jungle. So if you're somebody who lives in the woods and you're wanting to do a lot of those finer tasks, you're not gonna do a ton of chopping. You know, you're not swinging this for hours going through you know, greenery and brush in the jungle. I think the number two will be the better choice for you overall and you're actually getting more work done and will need uh, one less tool. You know, you don't need a smaller knife necessarily with this one. With the SE Hungalus, you know, after a while, you're gonna want some smaller knife to do the finer work with. This one can do it because of the balance point and the lighter weight. So guys, that's my feedback on the Hungalus 2. Absolutely love it. Love everything that it can do. Super, super impressed with its design. Now I've already talked about kind of more dimensionally that these are both you know the same as the original. Uh, the thing that I will note here is that these are just fantastic. You know to keep your hands in gripped very well. They're nice and full, and they give you a lot of real estate to work with. So for hacking, chopping, they're gonna stay in your hand, particularly with this kind of hook out the back there. It's not gonna want to slide out right away. Exposed pommels on both, so you can do hammering and crushing if you need to. And then it still gives you enough right there, and the blade is close enough within about three quarters of an inch to an inch on this one, and the same with this guy that uh, you'd still get very good control on the knife. So great handles, very ergonomic, don't create hot spots, no issues, and will stay in your hand for a long period of time, particularly with chopping and still give you the mobility you need for the finer stuff. So with the cleaver, it comes with this little uh, leather, USA made, high quality guard. It's not really, I would say, designed for long-term trekking unless you're gonna throw this in your pack. Just hits like that, nice leather strap, button, great stitching, zero complaints, but it's basically a blade guard. There's no really no way to attach onto your belt. You could run a secondary attachment right through here, then you could attach it to your belt that way, but then it would be hanging on the, your left-hand side. So it's, it's really designed to either just be thrown in a pack or to be carried more on expeditions, in my opinion, the, the sheath layout. And that's where I feel personally where I would be using this in more of like, we're setting up camp for a couple weeks and we're gonna maybe do day hikes and excursions or whatever. And then we're gonna come back and we need a really good cleaver to not only do some camp tasks if we need to, but process a lot of meat and other food and those type of things. And you want something that's really heavy duty and really overbuilt. That's what this leather sheath uh, would volunteer itself to also be designed for. So the number two comes with the exact same setup you would get on the original Hungalus, just again on a smaller scale. And it is by far, I would think, one of the best production sheaths on the market, period. 
Uh, this to get a custom maker to produce something very similar th to this for me, I would easily pay $100. Um, so that is alone a huge, huge value. So we're getting Kydex, drainage hole, lashing points either side. Very well done. You get your um, retention screw right here. So when it's down, it's easily removed with that nice thumb ramp. No problem. Snaps really solid into place. But I can slide that forward and now it's locked in and I cannot remove the blade. Then we have our retention point here with the nylon strap, just as an added bonus. And then the third one, which is this pocket right here, goes over the handle and closing it like that. So it's got three retention points, making this jump ready for the military. Then you got nylon all the way on the back here, heavy duty, very high quality with not only your belt attachment, but your um, molly attachments as well. Or you can unscrew that and completely remove it and do some other sort of belt attachment. So phenomenal, phenomenal sheath, very high quality and will, and will last you a lifetime. All right, let's go ahead and talk price point on these two guys. What are you gonna be paying out of pocket to get your hands on one of these designs, whichever one you think connects with you and that you'll get the most use out of. The cleaver is gonna be running about 140 is what I've seen it going for. And you know, for that price point, 1095, lifetime warranty, leather sheath, all US everything, very good quality. And I would say is very reasonable compared to other companies that are out there using 1095 US products, USA made products, you know, with similar quality points. So about 140 is what you're going to see. And I've seen the Hunglis uh, 2 for as low as 154. I believe I saw that over at the Knife Connection. Um, and uh, normal price, I've seen it actually higher, like around 170, 160. I think that the prices on the Hunglis and the Hunglis 2 now have gone up. It's basically the exact same price as the Hunglis, um, the original. So you really have to decide. It's not gonna be, you know, is one cheaper than the other. It's which one is gonna perform better for the needs that you're gonna put the knife through. So uh, for that price point, again, I mean, like I said, with the sheath, the sheath alone is like $100 if I had to go get a custom one made. So when you think about it, it's like the knife itself is like 50 bucks, 60 bucks. Uh, so you're getting a lifetime quality, not only in the, the materials, the design, but the entire functionality of the entire system. It's not like a great knife and a bogus sheath or a really good sheath, but kind of low quality materials on the knife. You know, you're getting good quality all around. And I do want to thank Essie for their willingness to send these over to us to test out and review. Uh, they have seen the videos that we've done in the past, several different Essie videos, and uh, they reached out to me. They said, hey, I didn't even know that either of these were coming out on the market. I actually knew about the cleaver at SHOT Show. Um, but I didn't know that the Hunglist 2 was coming out. And then they reached out to me and said, hey, you know, would you be willing to test these out? I said, yeah, I'm always open to give an honest you know, feedback and review. And that's what you guys are getting in this video. And I want to thank Essie for their willingness to do that so that I can give you guys a comprehensive full review so you can decide where to best spend your hard-earned money. And we will be including links below to the recommended places where I found some of the best deals. And if you do ever buy these on Amazon, Amazon's usually a little bit more expensive, but uh, we do always get a kickback from that and I appreciate it when you guys do use the hyperlinks for these products or any other products that you may want to purchase when you use the hyperlinks that helps us continue to get out here and film these videos for you. So as promised, giveaway time, we're going to be giving away this cleaver here with the date range being annotated in right now. That's when it'll be valid. That's when in the morning of that date, I will be uh, picking a winner at random from the comments below. All you need to comment below is tell me what you think of this new stone black wash or acid wash, whatever you want to call it. Uh, on this SE cleaver. Do you like it? Would you like to see it in more? Uh, do you like stone wash, uh, satin blades, or do you like the original baked on black coating? Would love to hear your guys' thoughts on that. I'm sure SE would like to just get some feedback too. So it'll be a two for one. SE will get some feedback and we'll get you guys in, in to win. One comment per person. I'll do a random number generator of all the comments that fall into that category. Bam, and then I will uh, comment on the winner's comment and they will have 48 hours to reach out to me uh, or I will have to pick somebody else. So that's how it's gonna work, guys. Go check it out below and start commenting and get entered in to win this sick cleaver from Essie. So folks, thanks for coming over today, watching this particular video. Hopefully this helps you guys out as you're deciding between the original SE Hunglis, the Hunglis 2, and the CL1, which one is the right one for you. Thank you so much for coming over here today and checking out the channel. Please subscribe, comment, like, share this video. Love to hear your guys' thoughts. Check us out on all the relevant social media. That's a great way to see what's up and coming, what we're working on next, and the different things that we're always doing. Uh, hit the little bell icon, the notification icon down below. That lets you 
you know when I post up a new video because we're posting like two or three a week, every week, comprehensive videos from anything and everything. You name it, we test it out and give you a comprehensive, full, honest review so you can make the best choice for yourself when you spend your hard-earned money. And always, finally, guys, remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and we'll see you out there.